And Josh uh, Chernin, who is one of the partners at the Business Improvement Group. Welcome. Thank you. Thank Josh, you, you know, we were talking a little bit uh, off uh, air before we started, and manufacturing has been a big priority uh, of the chamber. Our economy has changed, become more diverse, but manufacturing is, is and continues to be very important in terms of um, creating jobs, high-value jobs, uh, supporting other businesses uh, that uh, manufacturers, suppliers, accountants, lawyers, uh, HR, materials, goods, uh, manufacturing more so than other industries has a multiplier effect. And, um, and so it's been a priority for the chamber. Uh, you started a business with uh, three other colleagues uh, over a year ago, the Business Improvement Group. Um, and you, the four of you, you said bring a unique experience. But let's start kind of with you. You've worked your whole career in manufacturing. Yeah, uh, I started in uh, printing. I ran a printing plant uh, that printed telephone books back in the day when people used telephone books. Yep, yep. Try to make two and a half million Boston yellow pages hit the street on the same day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I worked at a uh, metal service center, and then for more than 20 years I worked with Web Industries, which is a roll-to-roll -roll, uh, converter and contract manufacturer. Five of those years was in Germany. I then started a consulting practice. One of my clients took me on, a uh, textile manufacturer weaving composites. And then a year ago, I started this uh, consulting firm, Business Improvement Group, with three other colleagues, right. all of whom have 25, 30 years of manufacturing experience. Uh, between the four of us, we've worked in 21 industries on four continents. Yeah. So. so that brings some perspective, some experience. I mean, you talked about your career, you know, um, uh, from printing to contract manufacturing, which is which is growing, to web industries, a large company, and, and internationally in Germany. And interestingly enough, we've got a number of German-based manufacturers here in, in the region, Carl Storrs and yeah. Charlton, Schott, yeah. um, uh, 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 company just in West Boylston uh, that, that just... Uh, uh, Umbridge uh, to just, just started. So some, some okay. German companies, many of those are family-owned Mittelstand companies that yep. uh, are constantly reinvesting to stay relevant. So, uh, you, you know, we've got a manufacturing hub here in Central Mass that we want to fight and keep, but interfacing with manufacturers around the globe. Yeah, and uh, it, it's tough. I mean, it's good news and bad news. Uh, over the years, the value of American manufactured goods has actually grown pretty steadily but the employment has gone way down. And that's a combination of automation and a mix of higher value added activities. And one of the unfortunate results is that the kind of the, uh, the industrial base has been hollowed out a little bit. Right. That, that being said, in Massachusetts, I think the figure is 275, 280,000 people still in manufacturing. The median wage in manufacturing is much higher than other sectors. Uh, and you've got a workforce that's aging out. Yeah. Uh, and though the overall number has shrunk, there are vacancies and opportunities exist. And that's one of the areas that the, the business improvement group works with. Uh, you work with manufacturers on on try to how to attract employees, retain employees. Yeah, uh, it's probably the number one issue that manufacturers in this area have. There are plenty of openings. They're good jobs. They're good pay, but they can't fill them. Right. Uh, part of that is the general labor economy. Part of it is a stigma that's been attached to manufacturing. Unfortunately, people perceive it as dirty, dark, dank, dangerous. That's right. And it's, and I've said it on the show with different <laughs> guests. I mean, you go into some of the manufacturing, and not necessarily factories anymore. I would ca characterize them as facilities. They're as clean as some hospital clean rooms and, and, and labs that I've been in. Absolutely. It, it's not your father's manufacturing. Right. The problem is a lot of kids don't know that. Yeah. And their parents maybe had a bad experience in manufacturing, and they don't talk to, manufa to their kids about manufacturing, and neither do their teachers. So the kids don't even know about it. Right. And there are a lot of efforts, and I know there's some in Worcester uh, also at the technical uh, high school, right. to get kids involved, at least get them exposed, to see that they can have a rewarding career. And that's one of the reasons why the Chamber started a statewide organization, uh, uh, a coalition, if you will, the Alliance for Voc Tech Ed, that's looking to expand vocational technical education and have dollars so that we're growing some of these manufacturing metal programs at our Voc Tech schools. Uh, and we've got a waiting yeah. list across the state, 3,500, 5,000 kids that look to get into the Voc Tech schools. So if we can expose kids and parents and teachers to the fields and careers here, 
hopefully we can fill that void a little bit and open up our schools during the summer. That's right. We had uh, uh, several local companies, IPG Photonics, yep. St. Cobain, uh, uh, and several others contribute, and we trained about 15 young people at the Worcester Technical High School this summer. Right. Uh, and, it's and, a great program. Yeah, yeah. And that's exactly what we need, more of it. Yeah. So we're working on it. But in the meantime, you, yeah. you, you guide companies on how to do that. Yeah. There are some uh, best hiring practices a lot of companies don't follow. Uh, they look for previous experience where there may not be any and where it really isn't needed. It's really what are the talents that people have as opposed to their experiences. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's also big opportunities, uh, as the Chamber well knows, to help integrate immigrants into that right. community. Right. Uh, a lot of them are quite skilled, and right. just because they don't have great command of the English language doesn't mean they can't be good employees, but it takes some creativity and some imagination to, to make that work. Uh, there are all kinds of opportunities also in training. There are best practices in training that a lot of manufacturing companies do not follow. And they have trouble integrating their new employees and then they sort of give up and they say, well, this isn't right. going to work. We've got to find people with experience and it's just not. And, and this is where there's an opportunity for your, your company. I mean, we're lucky to have some large scale manufacturers in the region, but most manufacturers are smaller, probably 50 employees or less, the yep. smaller kind of traditional machine shops, um, and they're very focused. The owners of the company and the leadership team are focused on meeting their customers' needs, making the widgets, you know, uh, making sure they're, they're quality, distribution, logistics, materials. So they may not have, may, they may have an HR person, but that person is probably one person and they've got their hands full. So you'll come right. in and work with them yeah. on strategies and plans. Right, that's exactly right. We'll help them find best practices for hiring in their area and for training. We can also help companies improve their processes and their productivity so maybe they don't need to hire so many people as they think they do. Uh, there's a lot of wasted activity in a lot of manufacturing plants that can be cut out. Uh, we can help them do that. Uh, we can help them with best practices with purchasing and with supply chain. Sometimes there are opportunities to insource or outsource, depending on what makes. And, and you know, you, we, we're talking offline, but it applies here locally. So uh, let's just start, you know, we still have a, a number of companies that do traditional manufacturing. As sure. you, you mentioned, you, you could be somebody who comes here from another country tomorrow, have limited e English, but if you're motivated to work, that company will work with you, and you'll get a, you know find a good job in traditional manufacturing. And then there's advanced manufacturing, which have higher levels of complex co complexity, yeah. quality. And then there's a piece that in between, or it applies to both of it, lean manufacturing, where you can sure. help a company be more efficient, take steps out of the process, and you work with them on that as well. Sure, we uh, we do lean, we do Six Sigma, we do Kaizen uh, events. Uh, we can also help, uh, there's a lot of manufacturers in this area that work for the defense industry. Right. Uh, they are going to be required pretty soon to adopt a cybersecurity uh, policy known as DFIRE. Mm -hmm. It scares the hell out of a lot of people, right. but it's coming. It will make them a better company if they embrace it rather than fighting it. Uh, we can help companies do that. We can help them with ITAR. We can help them with... Uh, What's ITAR? ITAR is the, uh, the uh, rules and regs around importation or export of military uh, equipment. Right. And, and, I, you know, and I, again, I, I think that's an important piece for people to understand and appreciating our regional economy. Um, you know, a lot of uh, the, 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 the smaller manufacturers in this region, a piece of their business is component parts for the aerospace industry, for defense contractors, could be uh, as it relates to the Navy and ships and boats, as well as a lot of high-end, very sophisticated, secret, <laughs> uh, you yeah. know, uh, 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 materials that keep us and, and, and products that keep us safe. Yeah, and there's a huge emphasis now on cybersecurity. Uh, all the Tier One firms in defense have, in theory, been required to to be adherent to this thing by December. The previous right. last last week, <laughs> uh, the the prime subcontractors are next. The Department of Defense has said they're going to flow this thing down ten levels into the supply chain, so it'll eventually get to every machine shop that produces even a small component that goes into 
a tank or a plane or or whatever. Right. They'll all be required to be compliant. Submarine, anti-ballistic missile, you know, whatever, Absolutely. whatever it might be. All um, of it. And 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 you know, again, as we talk about cybersecurity impacting, you know, global relations and and and, and people kind of stealing information, you know. If you might make the widget, but that widget supply, you know, they get into that company and then through, they, that's their way into the to the top. So that they want that's that level right. of security. And there's a lot of evidence that foreign countries are frankly more interested in hacking smaller companies because they're easier to hack, yep. and they can put the pieces together, right? Of how a they particular get a, a little drawing here, a little drawing there, and another one here, and pretty soon right. you know how the tank the tank is made. So, so Josh, if, if you're a manufacturer out there, or you know somebody who's next door neighbor's a manufacturer, a family member's a manufacturer, how do they uh, engage the business improvement group? How do they talk to you? Get in touch. We have a website www.bizimprovementgroup.com. Uh, there's an email interface on that website, or they can reach me at josh.chernin at bizimprovementgroup.com. Right, and, and, a, and a real specialty um, because there are a lot of you know, companies out there that say we can help you but um, and, and various processes and help businesses be more efficient, but having four individuals who've had such a breadth of experience in manufacturing, probably seen a lot, maybe not seen at all, no. but uh, between the four of you, probably We've close seen. to it. I mean, you bring that specialized <laughs> understanding, that value added that many of our manufacturers uh, just don't have the, the time and the ability or, or capacity to do. That's right. Uh, we also have a wide network of associates, and if we're asked to do something that we don't feel is right in our sweet spot, we'll refer people uh, to our partners or to our associates who have the direct expertise that's needed. Right. We're not going to try to do things that we're not good at. Right. Right. And that's a, a big, big part of it. Uh, just you know, before we close out, uh, another thing you know we've seen a little bit is is you know might be second, third generation business in the family. We, in Germany, they're known as Mittelstand, which kind of the core of the manufacturers. Yeah. To some extent, that exists in, in New England too, a little bit for, in the smaller size. You know, someone's getting, you know, 70, 78, might be time to retire, I want to turn it over to the next. I mean, how do family succession planning, you work on that space too. Yeah, we do, and, and I was shocked actually in doing the research, how many uh, manufacturing companies in this area are owned by boomers who are ready to retire. And very few of them have a real succession plan in place. And they want to, I think most of the time, primarily because they care about their employees yeah. and their customers, but they don't know how to begin. Right. And we can help with that. You know, and that could be within the family or employee owned, uh, you know, there's a variety right. of different ways where companies, and I, you know, and I think Josh, you, you absolutely right, you know, during my time uh, at the chamber, you know, working as Lieutenant Governor, in, in the manufacturing space and that being part of the portfolio along with uh, kind of the, the base realignment closure conversations that we're yeah. involved with yeah. uh, 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 working on uh, veterans issues you're in a lot of these manufacturing facilities and and you nailed it you know these business owners care and value their employees so much um, uh, you know, in, in over almost every instance, and so yeah. they want to take care of. They want to see right. it continue, and they take pride in what they do, and That's they understand right. the importance of it. That's right. And you've had relationships with these people for twenty, thirty, yeah. even forty years. Generations of the same family have worked in in yeah. businesses. They're integrated in the community. They are really part of the community, and it would be a shame to see these businesses dissolve because they don't have a real. Succession strong plan. succession plan. So yeah. Josh Chernin, a partner at the Business Improvement Group, great experience focusing on manufacturers. We'll give you one more time plug on who, phone number and, and, the, uh, and the website. It's uh, Biz Improvement Group, B-I-Z Improvement Group dot com. You can reach me at 617-803-9433. Great. Thanks, uh, thanks for being with us, Josh.